Sidney James Webb, first Baron Passfield on PC was a British socialist, economist, reformer and a co-founder of the London School of Economics. He was one of the early members of the Fabian Society in 1884, along with George Bernard Shaw, along with his wife Beatrice Webb, Annie Besant, Graham Wallace, Edward R. Pease, Hubert Bland, and Sidney Olivier. Shaw and Webb turned the Fabian Society into the preeminent political intellectual society of England during the Edwardian era and beyond. He wrote the original Clause IV for the British Labour Party. Background and Education Webb was born in London to a professional family. He studied law at the Birkbeck Literary and Scientific Institution for a degree of the University of London in his spare time. While holding down an office job, he also studied at King's College London. Prior to being called to the bar in 1885, professional life. In 1895 he helped to establish the London School of Economics, using a bequest left to the Fabian Society. He was appointed Professor of Public Administration in 1912, a post he held for 15 years. In 1892, Webb married Beatrice Potter, who shared his interests and beliefs. The money she brought with her enabled him to give up his clerical job and concentrate on his other activities. Sidney and Beatrice Webb founded the New Statesman magazine in 1913. Political career Webb and Potter were members of the Labour Party and took an active role in politics. Sidney became Member of Parliament for CM at the 1922 general election. The couple's influence can be seen in their hosting of the coefficients, a dining club which attracted some of the leading statesmen and thinkers of the day. In 1929, he was raised to the peerage as Baron Passfield, of Passfield Corner in the county of Southampton. He served as both Secretary of State for the Colonies and Secretary of State for Dominion Affairs in Ramsay MacDonald's second Labour government in 1929. As Colonial Secretary he issued the Passfield White Paper revising the government's policy in Palestine, previously set by the Churchill White Paper of 1922. In 1930 failing health caused him to step down as Dominion's Secretary but he stayed on as colonial secretary till the fall of the Labour government in August 1931. The Webbs were supporters of the Soviet Union until their deaths. Their books, Soviet Communism, A New Civilization, and The Truth About Soviet Russia give a very positive assessment of Joseph Stalin's regime. Marxist historian Al Richardson later described Soviet Communism, A New Civilization, as pure Soviet propaganda at its most mendacious. Writings Webb co-authored, with his wife, a pivotal book on the history of trade unionism. For the Fabian Society he wrote on poverty in London, the eight-hour day, land nationalisation, the nature of socialism, education, eugenics and reform of the House of Lords, personal life. When Beatrice Webb died in 1943, the casket containing her ashes was buried in the garden of their house in Passfield Corner. Lord Passfield's ashes were also buried there in 1947. Shortly afterwards, George Bernard Shaw launched a petition to have both reburied to Westminster Abbey, which was eventually granted. Today, the webs of ashes are interred in the nave of Westminster Abbey, close to those of Clement Attlee and Ernest Bevan. In 2006 the London School of Economics, alongside the Housing Association Landlord Places for People, renamed their Great Dover Street student residence Sydney Webb House in his honour. Archives Sydney Webb's papers are among the Passfield Archive at the London School of Economics. Posts about Sydney Webb regularly appear in the LSE Archives blog, Out of the Box. Bibliography Works by Sidney Webb Facts for Socialists Fabian Essays in Socialism The Basis of Socialism Historic A Plea for an Eight Hours Bill English Progress Towards Social Democracy Practicable Land Nationalization The Workers' Political Program What the Farm Labourer Wants A Labour Policy for Public Authorities London's Neglected Heritage London's Water Tribute Municipal Tramways 
the municipalization of the gas supply, the reform of the poor law, the scandal of London's markets, the unearned increment, socialism, true and false, the London vestries, what they're and what they do, with map, table of vestries, etc., the difficulties of individualism, labor in the longest reign, problems of modern industry, the economics of direct employment, five years fruits of the Parish Councils Act, the education muddle and the way out, 20th century politics, a policy of national efficiency, the Education Act, 1902, how to make the best of it, London Education, the London Education Act, 1903, how to make the best of it, paupers and old age pensions, the decline in the birth rate, grants in aid, a criticism and a proposal, the necessary basis of society, seasonal trades, with a, freeman, what about the rates, or, municipal finance and municipal autonomy, the war and the workers, Handbook of some immediate measures to prevent unemployment and relieve distress. The restoration of trade union conditions. When peace comes. The way of industrial reconstruction. The reform of the House of Lords. The teacher in politics. National finance and a levy on capital. The root of labor unrest. The constitutional problems of a cooperative society. The Labour Party on the threshold, the need for federal reorganization in the cooperative movement, the Local Government Act, 1929 how to make the best of it, what happened in 1931, a record, works by Sidney and Beatrice Webb History of Trade Unionism, Industrial Democracy, English Local Government Volume, IX, The Manor and the Borough, The Breakup of the Poor Law, English Poor Law Policy, the Cooperative Movement, Works Manager Today, The Consumers' Cooperative Movement, Decay of Capitalist Civilization, Methods of Social Study, Soviet Communism, A New Civilization, The Truth About Soviet Russia.